another point for you guys. Yeah. Okay, so like instead of how you said like pulling the lever, you're deliberately killing the person, but also by pulling the lever, you're deliberately saving five people, as opposed to if you don't pull the lever, you're just saving one person. Okay, yeah, uh, so it seems like a majority of the people wanted to pull the lever, and the rule that it seems like the majority of the people were abiding by is, if you have to make a decision in cases like these, the rule that you operate by is minimize death, right? Or save the most amount of people that you can. So now we'll go back, Yes, you got a response. Okay, how does the lever work exactly? When you're <laughs> <laughs> how does the lever work? Yeah, can you explain exactly how? Yeah, if you pull the lever, it switches. Is it the wheels or the track? Uh, it's the, the track. wheels or the track? It's the track. Uh, either. Okay, so if it's the track, it is, I guess, theoretically, I'll just force it midway. I go flying off and I just take my chances. Can't do that. My rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think you had okay. you a response earlier. Or? No. Okay. No. Let's, yeah. So if I pull this and you said that it's going at a fast speed, wouldn't I just fall over to? Like, no, you have a great seatbelt. No, it's it's a really well designed trolley <laughs> track. <laughs> See where this is going, right? It's a thought experiment, so we can stipulate you, know, you actually have to choose, and you're not going to get out of it by not choosing. So, uh, another one? Yeah. Back to the casualty list. Would you rather, and this is just theoretical, if there was another person in that list, it would be six, would you rather kill six people or minimize that down to one? Which option would you choose? If it was me personally, I don't want six people's death on my character. I choose track B. Yeah. So, uh, good news for you who, pe who decided to pull the lever um, is that uh, most people agree with you, right? Um, most people think in this scenario that the right thing to do is is to pull the lever and to switch to track B. And when they are asked for the reasoning, uh, you know, the moral rule which supports switching from track A to track B. They give the reason that a lot of you gave, which is, um, I don't want five deaths on my conscience, I have to choose, but you know, in a choice like this, you have to minimize death. And is that one more hand? Yeah, yeah uh, so in this world, okay, <laughs> um, is it fair to say that I believe in sparing the one person or five people from survivors killed who are thinking that I made the wrong decision or just fairness in general? I think it will wrap around to all six. <laughs> that obviously seems like the wrong answer. So we're just going to leave it there. It's equal fairness to all of the people on the track. There is no lap around. So, for those of you, for those of you who think that the, uh, the rule here that we're abiding by is that we ought to minimize uh, deaths, and that's why we have to switch from track A to track B. We're gonna change the scenario a little bit. There is no track B. And you're not on the trolley. You are on an overpass. And you are watching this trolley. We'll speed towards these five people. And now you think, oh no, what's going to happen to these five people? Well, um, you know that if this trolley continues, it's going to hit and kill the five people. There's no lever for you to pull, but there is somebody in front of you. <laughs> and what you could do is push the person in front of you off the overpass and you know that the trolley will come to a stop over them. How many of you are pushing the people? <laughs> Can I jump off the bridge?
I can use myself to stop it, which is a heroic thing to do, right? But remember, since I make the rules, no. Uh, you, uh, your, your shoes are glued to the uh, to this thing, right? Uh, I've glued you into your shoes. No. So, here's a question. Um, what's different about this case? We got hands, so first year. Sacrifice is a lot more personal. You are deliberately here. You have to touch them for this. You do, right? Um, yeah. The sacrifice may be more personal, but in the end, it's the exact same situation. Because at the end of the day, you are using your agency and your like. You are determining to end that specific person's life. You are making the willful decision. So there isn't a difference. You so are, it, it's just another way of doing. It. So uh, what you're saying is. This case is the same as the other case, right? Because yeah. it's the same yeah. numerically. It doesn't matter your personal bias. At the end of the day, the net body count is going to be the same. So, okay, there. You. Know, the difference is physics. Uh, if the trolley is going to hit and kill all five people rolling through him, then how would it stop on one person? Uh, it's, a, it's a downhill <laughs> after this, right? It's a poorly drawn diagram, right? But <laughs> if, it, if, it, yeah, if it hits this person, it will stop, and then it gains speed. It would gain stop. speed after. Um, how many of you thought we should switch tracks in the first case, but we shouldn't push the person? So if that's the case, then it seems like the rule that we were talking about at the beginning, which was when we are in these types of situations, we ought to do whatever will minimize um, the amount of deaths, we actually think, there's gotta be something wrong with that because if, if your intuition is correct, though that gives you the right answer in the first case, or though that rule accords with your intuition in the first case, it seems like it doesn't accord with your intuition in the second case. Yeah? in this case. The question is to try to come up with a principle that uh, allows you to be consistent. And there are, there are a couple ways to be consistent. One is to say that you shouldn't pull the lever in either in the first case, and you shouldn't push the person in this case because they're the same, right? One way to also be consistent is to say you should pull the lever in the first case, and you should push the person in this case because they're the same. Does that make sense? And a third way to be consistent would be to say, I actually have a different rule that tells me why it's okay to pull the lever in the first case, but not okay uh, to push the person in the second case. Does that make sense? Does it make any, is it, is it that you have to touch the person in this case? So what if I give you a lever here and I say, no, 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 no. <laughs> I have to take the lever and pull it. Change it? No. <laughs> 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 I mean, I had somebody say something.
sometime, well, this person was up on the bridge, so it's not their fault. And I said, okay, we'll just pull up the five people, put them up on a bridge over here, and just say that there's, you know, there's a jump that the draw is going to be. <laughs> the whole point is, uh, is that it seems very deeply, intuitively true to most people that what we ought to do is pull the lever in the first case, but that there seems to be something deeply wrong with pushing the person in the second case. Um, and that is the trolley problem. The trolley problem isn't uh, you know, what to do in this case or what to do in this case. The trolley problem is that our intuition, our moral intuition, gives us uh, what seem like discordant answers to both of these questions. Now, um, ethics is about doing the right thing. Right? And uh, it's very easy to do the right thing when doing the right when the right thing is very easy to pick out of the answers. You know, if your question is, should I uh, should I hurt somebody or just go on with my everyday life? The, the answer is obvious: don't hurt somebody, right? But the problem and ethical difficulties arise when we find ourselves in situations where it's really unclear what the right answer is. Um, so let's let's take another look at uh, a, a problem that's <coughs> kind of similar to this trolley problem and see what it might tell us. And again, the point of the trolley problem uh, isn't so that you can know what to do if you're ever on a runaway trolley. Right? The point of the trolley problem is to try to get you to think about ways in which your moral intuition um, might not be consistent. And so how, how to come up with a, a rule that's consistent for you to follow. What about something like um, uh, organ failure or organ donation? You know something like 20, 20 people in the United States die every day because they need an organ. Now let's suppose there's two people. Alex and Bob. And Alex needs a liver. And Bob needs a heart. <laughs> now what happens if Alex and Bob go to the hospital together and they say, uh, I need a liver and I need a heart. Um, and the doctor says, great, I've got a heart and a liver in my freezer right now. What should the doctor do? Yeah, give the liver to the liver person and the heart to the heart person, right? Um, and we might think that it would be wrong of the doctor not to do that if they had the organs in the freezer. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, what if the doctor says, opens up, says, let me look, and he opens up the freezer, and there's nothing in there? You better find the organ quick. Then uh, Alex and Bob are what? Dead. They're out of luck. But what if Alex and Bob say, Doc, let's hear us out. We notice that Carl over there in the hospital bed um, he seems to have a heart and a liver. Um, now, I know that you want to save as many lives as possible. So just hear, hear Bob and I out. What we suggest you do, cut up Carl, <laughs> give uh, me the heart, and give Alex the liver. Should the doctor do that? No. 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 Huh? Is he Is he no, he's just asleep. Why is it so So do that. He broke his ankle. Yeah. Yeah, they have a blood type. And we're also imagining a, a potential future where organ transplants have been perfected. So there's no risk of uh, a body rejection organ in that kind of way. 
So if the supposed obvious answer is like, no, they shouldn't cut off Carl, does that mean that consent trumps the casualties? Uh, that seems to be the moral principle that, that people are operating on, right? Is that something yes. like uh, maybe bodily autonomy is, uh, trumps, uh, trumps something like a utilitarian calculus here and then there. If Carl was operating on that, I think confirmation that you can't do part two. Yeah, uh, the situation uh, does happen when people actually die and they're organ donors, right? But then the situation is easy. Um, this situation, what we would be doing is essentially killing one to save two, right? Um, yes. So 20 people a day die of organ failure today, right? Um, so here's today, and here's the organ lottery world. Here's how many people die of organ failure death. Die of organ failure death. Oh, here's how many people suffer organ failure death today. And here's how many people die um, by being uh, what would be the term that they would come up with? A harvest kill. They'd probably come up with a term like. Uh, Unwilling donor? I don't know. Uh, yeah, they'd probably, you know, if they're trying to sell this to the public, they would use some kind of this happier term, right? Uh, we can just call it harvesting. How many people yeah. die uh, today for that? Zero, right? In this hypothetical future, how many people would die of organ failure? If organ failure is perfected, or sorry, if organ transplant is perfected, and we're doing this when at least two people need organs. Zero. Zero or one, right? Let's just call it zero. Now, how many people die from being harvested in this month? How many? Ten. Ten or less. There is no seatbelts. 
How many people die in an auto in auto accidents in a world where there's no seatbelts? Let's call that number N. How many people die because they're trapped by their seatbelt in a world where seatbelts don't exist? Zero. Zero. Seatbelt deaths are zero. Now, in our world where we have seatbelts, Um, how many people die of seatbelt deaths today? It's a number, let's call it P. And how many people die um, from auto accidents Less than today? N. Less than N, right? Um, now, the reason we all want to live in a world where we have seatbelts is because we think that in this world, less people die, right? We think that N minus, let's call this one Q, N minus Q, is that gonna be greater or less than P? So P is the number of people who die seatbelt deaths, right? So N minus Q is going to be the people that seatbelts save. So we think that the number of people that seatbelts save, do you think that's going to be greater or less than the number of people that seatbelts kill? Greater. A lot greater, right? That's why we wear our seatbelts. We know there's a small chance that our seatbelt could hurt us, but there's a much larger chance that our seatbelts could help us, right? might apply in this organ world too? No. In this world, your chances of dying from organ failure go from 20 to zero. And your chances of dying from being harvested for your organs, of course, they go up from zero. They go up from zero to less than half of what your chances of dying from organ failure were. Now, how many people are convinced and go, great, sign me up. Uh, I, I'm ready for the, for the harvesting world. <laughs> a couple people can be convinced. Um, you know, sometimes when I have my, my utilitarian hat on, I can think like, why did you make a case for this? We've just been trying to make a case for it. If you don't want this world, why not? Uh, so, I don't think you've heard from me yet. Yeah. Let's think about this. What if somebody close to you, what if it's a little child or something with a lot of blood in their head and then that is just getting butchered for their organs? Yeah, so we could make a kind of rule. Um, and I go, suppose I change it a little bit and I say we make sure that you're only eligible for harvesting when you're after 30 and you can't be helped. Uh, by uh, harvesting if you're over 50. I don't know. So the, the reason I say this is uh, it looks, so uh, oftentimes people come up with these objections and they go, well, I'm worried that somebody could game the system. Or what if somebody who is benefiting from this who doesn't deserve it? Uh, maybe somebody ruined their organ uh, through negligence. Um, you wouldn't want somebody like, uh, you know, who, be delivered because they um, abused alcohol for 40 years to benefit from the liver of your 18-year-old friend. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then we can just go, oh, well, we can kind of build safeguards into the program to make sure that doesn't happen. Are you happy now? And almost nobody goes, yeah, I'm happy now. Uh, almost everybody goes, oh, I still have objections. And what that means is like, that wasn't your real objection, right? Uh, so um, let's go up to the very back first. Um, even though I did raise my hand before. Uh, also, another flaw with it is that, like, you know, like two people could just like do a little bit of trolling and like have their organs fail and then just like eliminate somebody for no reason. Well, again, and this is going to be a theme, since it's my thought experiment, we can uh, just stipulate that uh, you know we have some intelligent AI running some algorithm that leads those people out, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so if you 
get picked to get harvest, right? And you're being, uh, you're being, once you get harvest, you got them. Yeah. All right. So is your family getting any money out of this? Because you're dead. Would that make it better? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if my family has like a million dollars, not dying. If I say, yeah, it's just uh, like we'll, we'll also finance this with a $50,000 gift to the families of people who are being harvested. Is that, does that make it better? Oh, yeah. My, uh, <laughs> my, uh, my intuition is that people who wouldn't accept it without the money won't accept it with the money either. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, we've got you. stipulate that we only harvest somebody if we can save at least two people, right? That was built into it. So, uh, so that's going to, yeah. The second thing is because, um, it's really just like, first, first off, it should be like a consent thing. Like, if you consent to having be part of this program, of being one of the right enough people to get harvested, I feel like then it's okay. But like, I feel like as long as it's successful on it, I feel like it's okay. Ah, okay. So is, is, and I just, were you uh, follow up on that? Yeah. I mean, I think the consent thing is the big thing because otherwise, I mean, you know, ultimately, like somebody can like have their liberal fail, like completely outside of malicious intent, like it can just happen. But I mean, isn't that just kind of their luck? Why should somebody else suffer just because they got a bad role? You know? Yeah, uh, I think that the um, the answer from somebody who's advocating this is like that is bad luck, and what we want to do is minimize bad luck. And that's exactly what this program does. Well, the lottery is luck. Is the bad luck. The lottery is luck, isn't it? So the people that are selected are also getting bad luck. Yeah, they're getting uh, bad luck. But instead of having 20 people get bad luck, we have at least less than 10 people getting bad luck. We're in the bad luck minimizing business. So uh, uh, I, I want to touch again on what you said about the consent issue, right? Because I think you were uh, agreeing with that too. Um, I talked about this like it was some kind of government policy. Would it make you feel better if this was like an opt-in policy that Blue Cross offered? Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I might be running out of time here, but I wanna ask, yeah, I am. I wanna ask real quick, if there's any kind of moral intuition that you think the difference between these two cases might shed light on, or why you think that the organ lottery is something we ought not to do, but seatbelt laws seem like something that we ought to do. Yeah? I think it is a matter of personal agency. You have the right to make your own decisions. Yeah. So uh, it might have something to do with like rights, right? Like you own your you own your person in a way, and maybe something like uh, your right to your personhood and your life trumps the kind of utilitarian calculus that's going on here, right? There are some things that uh, the state or your insurance company or whoever can't take away from you, even if it would benefit other people. Does that make sense? Now, if we say that, um, no, that what we're saying is something like, there are some rights which aren't justified um, based on it being better off for everybody. Because this is clearly an example where more people live longer. But most people still balk at this and they say, no, no, no. Um, I don't want to live in a world where uh, the organ lottery takes place. Yeah. Um, what if the harvesting consent is part of retirement? What if harvesting consent is part of retirement? So that it only Consent, right? So is it? I, are you yeah. saying like people like, consent when they retire, or, yeah. when they or is it compulsory when they retire? Yes. Yeah, compulsory when they retire. Uh, yeah, I mean, these are different ways to change it, right? Um, the problem with that is that you're, uh, you're probably not going to get um, the precious kind of organs that you want uh, for an organ uh, 
lottery, you are only harvesting the organs of retired ones, right? Yes. Um, oh, last one, last one. A modification plan that you could do is like if somebody has like a life-threatening disease or ailment that doesn't pertain to that like specific organ, they would be the first ones to get harvested. Like if somebody has like brain cancer and somebody needs their heart, they just like get rid of them. Yeah, there are actually, um, uh, you know, when you sign up to be like an organ donor, uh, there are networks that you can agree to be part of where uh, you will be first in line, provided that you also agree uh, to donate your organs. So something like a, an informal thing like this uh, can occur, and that's a modification of this, right? Um, but the point about this is simply that if we just look at these two examples, it seems like what this might be telling us is that we think there are some rights which trump utilitarian calculus. And that's an interesting philosophical conclusion. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the last All right, let's hear it for Dr. Clark. our next event, which is a discussion about the readings that we sent you. And you all are going to get a book uh, in this bag, among some other things that I'll share with you. Um, but the book is on common sense economics. And the primary author is who our big speaker is tonight and who's going to talk about the book with you. So uh, included in your bag is a signed copy of the book. And so that'll be part of the materials. Um, you were all emailed the digital version, the PDF version, so we weren't breaking the law because we're giving you the actual book uh, as well. So we have that. We have a hat. We have Maggie's popcorn. And there's a variety of different flavors. We just kind of randomly put them into different ones so you guys can do a little trading. You know, we got the economics part, so if you need to trade popcorn, that might be a good idea. We have a coffee mug with some contact information with the professors, the three professors at the institute are there. Nice LaGuard Institute pen. What else do we got in here? School of Business sticker. A t-shirt. And if we need to do different sizes, you can talk to Luke. Uh, you're saying no, there might not be as many size selection. So sorry if it's uh, off on the size. But this is our PPE Fest t-shirt, a notepad, a lapel pen that you can put on a shirt. I like to put them right on my collar there. And some of you might have a little window sticker. So, and then the final thing is a framed certificate of completion for coming to the event today. So each one of you has your name on here and the fact that you completed our event today. So that is what we have, and these guys, don't you guys can come on up. So we're gonna take, you guys can do a little bathroom break, come and get your goodie bag, go back to your desk. Hey, Russ, yeah. Uh, make sure, if you haven't already, I've got, uh, if you didn't know, you're receiving $50 for coming today, but what I need from you is you need to come sign your name, email, phone number on this sheet, and then also you'll have to fill out a W-9 form uh, that you're not going to be taxed on it since it's less than $600, but we're still required by law to have the W-9 filled out. And then lastly, uh, Jamie Winslow, you missed your signature on yours. Okay, Abigail's. Yes, there we